Let us all pray silently, meditating on God's words. Almighty Father, Father, you fulfill your words. Today, help me not to be a detestable person. Help me to be a person that obeys your words. All of us, let, let it be a time where we have all of our wishes fulfilled. And this vigil service, through this vigil service, this incredible promise, let that be mine. Let there be, help us be witnesses of receiving miracles in our life and receiving answers to miracles. Help our children and our family to be children who honor their parents, who are godly children. Let there be love between brothers, brothers and sisters. Help us to be workers for our country. Help us to be patriotic uh, individuals who work for our country and contribute to our country. Help us to be righteous servants of yours who are, are approved by you. Help us to receive all the power and strength. Father, help us to receive the blessings of being your witness in the name of Jesus. In thankfulness and blessings, I pray. Amen. Yeah, let's repeat after me. Young lamb, sheep, your wishes, regardless of what you brought here today, each of you, this midnight service, this vigil service, you think you're just doing vigil service? No. Amidst this vigil service, there's incredible promises. And through this vigil service, the dirty sins of our ancestors that have come down, we receive incredible forgiveness of the incredible sins that came up down upon us. Like J uh, J Jacob, uh, when he received forgiveness of his, of, while he did vigil prayer, if you don't repent when you get older, then we, at night we can't sleep and we get sick and we end up being tortured and tormented. This, they end up, you know, they're not able to sleep, so they end up, you know, being tormented at night. That's, who is that? Others, not others, but in your own household, the people who have high of official uh, who are high officials who are famous on their deathbed they don't die easily years and years day and night they're tormented and they end up wasting all their money and that's how and then they die and and uh, the high-ranking officials usually means that they took bribes and all that in korea usually people who saw that the dirty things that you have seen the sicknesses comes down to you Deuteronomy 33 verse De Genesis 30 verse 37 and they give bad things to the descendants but when you do vigil prayer you don't have those kind of torment that comes down to you and you have blessings on your death and you give blessings onto your descendants and the dirty calamities you don't give down to the descendants but you and I this great promise we don't know it and vigil service we we think oh, we are forced to kind of do it when we really need it those kind of people later on their deathbed look at their image it's very pitiful who are we vigil service continue when we continue in that when we properly have realization those people who continue to have vigil ser uh, do a vigil service on their uh, when they pass away when they receive they they pass away in a very uh, nice way and they give great things to their descendants because they receive forgiveness of all of their ancestors' sins. They're so blessed. The ancestors, when they are grafted in like that, and after that, it's kind of like when the ancestors, they they break the fallow ground, and then later, the descendants, uh, they don't have to work hard to get good uh, good yield from their crop. Jeremiah 4, 3, but the ancestors, if they did not do that, and they give hard land to the descendants, the descendants really suffer. To th Those people, th they seem to not do much, but they're doing so well. But our household, why? They're suffering so much, and their their hands are bleeding, and that's how much they work on the ground. But the ground is so hard, so it doesn't yield much. You know that so well, but amidst nature, uh, you hear Romans 1, 19, uh, Romans 1, 19 and 20. Let's read Jeremiah 4, 3. Thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and to Jerusalem, break up your hallow ground and do not sow among thorns. Break up your fallow ground and do not sow among, among thorns. So break up your fallow ground. The ground that's hardened, they, nobody has broken that before then. The, the fallow ground, even if you have repented a little bit, when, then you're still fallow ground. I hear the good news, though. The fakes in Korea that are saying, if you believe once, you're saved. 
they, they're mostly gone now. They say, believing once is not enough. You have to keep your faith. You have to protect your faith. Now, most people are now saying that, that's, which is great news. And they didn't do this before, but now they're saying you have to cleanse through the blood of Christ. That This is a, a good news for Korea. Good that they know the, to repent the mystery of, through, through the, uh, the blood of Christ, but they don't know that it's a mystery. If you don't know that this is a mystery and you use Christ, if you don't know this mystery of Christ, and say, yeah, there has to be a, a safe, a treasure. If you don't know the, there has to be a safe, but if you don't know the combination, you can't, you have the safe, but you can't open it, then that's of no use. But usually, who's the one that's the problem? Those who learned a lot of lies, worldly education, that's problematic. How much of a problem it is? God says, even your own household, you fall into, you create the falling of the ruins of it. Those who are well educated, the more they learn the worldly things, that if they learn properly, but the worldly things are rudimentary and elemental. Galatians 4 9. So, those who cause problems, they're bound by this. They're the ones that create, uh, fall into ruins. 1 Corinthians 3 19 and 20. They fall into ruins for themselves and others. Jesus is whose? Philippians 2 7 through 10. He is God Almighty. He's the same level of God Almighty. He, God Himself, coming in the flesh, that's Jesus. So Jesus, the worldly, st those who are well educated from worldly st standpoint, He didn't pick them. Why? There's no time. But if you pick them, for it takes more than three and a half years. So those who are not well educated, He picked those as, as His disciples and uh, took them, taught them for three and a half years, day and night. So. Uh, to, to, to this day, enabling this gospel to be shared to us today. So will it not work for those who are well educated? It can, but how? Those who really try to, uh, like Apostle Paul, who really try to hard to live well and properly. He, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he's so well educated, and he was really trying to work hard to live according to the word, but he didn't know Christ. He became, he was such a fake. And in on Damascus, on the road to Damascus, God, God touched him and felt him and started to make him a proper human being. On the path to Damascus, after he fell there for three years, after that he trained. He he got training from God. He became a worker of for the Lord. So each of you, you and me, then what what are we going to do after we hear the word of God? And are we gonna are we gonna be stubborn about the worldly studies that we learned? The worldly studies. That's all stubbornness because it's ignorant. It's not only are they ignorant, but they're uh, they're stubborn. So they're full of sins. Romans chapter two, verse four and five. Let's look that up. This is all. Those who those uh, they're not gentle. They're not forgiving. They don't know how to forgive others. They're not gentle, and they don't receive forgiveness themselves. These are the ones that are stubborn, and they don't repent. So not only are they stubborn, they're servant of demons, and they criticize others so easily and so well. And wherever they go, they argue. So, and they cause divisions and factions. These kind of people in the family, between husband and wife, those who are stubborn, what is that? Rather, if they're not educated, then they would not be so stubborn. Why are they, why are they less stubborn? Because they, there's less that they know. They don't know as much. They say, I'm so ignorant. But does, it doesn't mean they don't have sin. They all have sin, but they have a little bit less. So your ancestors, my ancestor, when he passed away, they passed away in a very uh, uh, a peaceful way. No, they lived so poor. For many generations, if they live so poor, they don't have money to do bad deeds. But the ancestors, when those who have sins of their ancestors, and when they die and not a bad death, then our ancestors, Oh, they died a good death, you may say, then they're really poor. If they they suffered, and that day and night, they were uh, tormented and investigated, and they were to tormented when they died, those are the ones that had high positions. They end up being interrogated for all the bribes and embezzlement. It's just like that. According. So what must you and I do? The person who is the one without sin. So, so no need to look down at others based on their sin, but in Korea. Our country, what's a little bit interesting, those who have uh, children, they say, you can't just say anything. Yeah, don't spit down at others and, and turn around because it's going to come back to you. And yet they do, they say these things, and yet they don't know, and they do bad things again. They say it comes back to you. We can't, if you have children, you can't really uh, accuse other people's children, other people. 
All the sins coming out of our heart and our flesh are the same, so we can't just accuse others. We can't just easily accuse others. Who's the one that can just easily accuse others or just what, say whatever one? Who's the one that can say this in the, uh, whatever they want in this world? Why? From our ancestors, what came down from God, from Adam and Eve. They all, they sinned, we all are sinners. Just like Adam and Eve, we're just the same in that we're all sinners. Each of you, really, truly, we, in our, the life that we're leading, it's going to come back to us, what we sow. It's saying, basically, that we reap what we sow. So many people, however, they don't realize this. So, it's very unfortunate. So, according to what we sow, if it comes back, that's the case. We'll, if we sow corn, then we will reap corn, uh, but beans and so forth. But if we reap thorns, then we'll, uh, if we sow thorns, we'll reap thorns. It's God's promise. And all religions ac acknowledge that this, that we reap what we sow. If you sow good, then good things come. If you sow wickedness and evil, then wickedness and evil come back to you. People, whether they believe in religion or not, they all say this. They don't know the way to do away with this, however, to they don't know how to go from wrong and incorrect path to the right path. You and I, who's the one that lives without sin? We don't. So we're all detestable. And yet, the person that's detestable, they're the ones that have seven sins coming out of their heart. It's what, our, what we say, what our actions are, are different. So we're double-minded. Those who are detestable, Proverbs 26, 25, you know this. So each of you, once you realize this, so... Who can say who's noble and great in this world? The person that doesn't erase their sins through forced up repentance. They're all detestable. They're really double-minded completely. And they're the ones that are just teasing others. That's Proverbs 26, verse 5. Let's look that up. Because I'm a person like that, with a heart of repentance, let's look up this verse, because we're all like this. God, He's such a wonderful God. So then, you and I, we want to have good things in our heart. We can't be detestable like this. So, but we, you and I, we're all like this, however, detestable. Once we realize we're like this, there's no books to really to uh, buy and read. Even if it's a, supposedly a good book, there's nothing really anything worthwhile. Oh, somebody wrote this great uh, book? No, they're detestable. But people even don't even say that. The, they have demon inside if they're detestable god says they're a perishing beast with the seven demon inside oh it's a detestable person that wrote this it's a, that's that's it somebody came, somebody called from the from abroad pastor i listened to the tape i realized this there's something very famous a book it's a very famous book is what famous book is it no matter how many how famous a book it is no matter how expensive it is there 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 a person that it's detestable that wrote it and that has some demon inside. You can you can burn that. When I, I said that, what is expensive? What is a book that's expensive? What? If it's really expensive, then sell it. Then use it somewhere else. Uh, how famous is that? Can it be? Those with what a de person with demon inside did, wrote. How can it be so famous? Proverbs 26, verse 25. When he speaks graciously, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Amen. Yes. Your ancestors, at one point, if they had high position, and if they were a noble educator, and just realized that they're detestable, and they were liars. Uh, when I'm like that, then realize that I'm a double-minded person that's detestable and a great liar. It's exactly according to the Word of God. No matter if they wrote good things and say good things, they have seven abominations in their hearts, seven don't even believe them. That's what God has written and what has said. So this detestable abomination, seven seven different abominations, what's what's that? What's happening that in their heart? That's Matthew 15, 19. This kind of sins are coming forth from our heart. If we leave it and only unrepentant and we say we're educated from a worldly standpoint and we they're saying good things, but inside, even if you hear it, but inside, they're detestable inside. They're double-minded, in other words, they're two-faced. What they say with their uh, mouth and what they do with their actions are different. So it's been recorded like this, but despite that, why? Wow, Th that he's a provost or he's a high-ranking person. How can they be like that? No, of course, they're detestable. They're, they're going to be like that. They're, oh, this person, 
He's such a high-ranking person. Why did he do that? Well, they're detestable. That's why they're going to be end up. Be, they're bound to be like that. Oh, the, Picasso. Why was he like that? He's a world-famous painter. But because he's detestable, he he's like that. So each of you, who is the one that's noble, who's regardless of the religion, they're all detestable. No, regardless of how rank, how high ranking position they are, you and I, we have we have sins unrepented. We have to cleanse those to be a proper human being. You don't really know the world that well. So yet people they're doing those deeds. Think they think they're so great, but they're the image. It's the image of detestable people. The sins coming forth from their heart. They don't know it and they don't win over it. They can't win over it. It's not anything else. And they're acting up. And why are you why are you so surprised by that? What's They all have the detestable sins, and yet people look at them and say they're famous and they're exhi doing exhibitions and so forth. It's the revelation, it's the exhibition of us being a servant to seven demons inside, and yet they want to advance, they want to boast their own name. What's the detestable things coming out of our heart? No matter how much you may make a great speech or say great things, they have seven abominations inside. Do not believe them. It's, God, it's what God's telling us. Then you and I, what must we do? We're the same type, type of people as well. So our children, even before the, before the parents, they pretend to listen in front of the parents, but when they go outside, they, they just ignore it and do whatever they want. So that's before they're even that, that uh, old. They're, even when they're young, when we're young, when we were young, you know, the, uh, they didn't know how to wash their hair that well. Even the young ones, only when we're young, we listen to the parents. When they're able to wash their own hands and they're old enough for that, then they already don't listen to their parents' uh, instructions. So the Koreans have the phrase, hey, they're not even able to wash their head and that they still don't even listen to the parents already. They're, so, they're still so young. So they go their own path instead of uh, the, hear, listening to the instructions of the parents. Our ancestors, they seem to like they know something, but they don't know the answer. The word of God, uh, the answer is always in the Word of God. It's all in the Word of God. So you, we, you and I, we were like this. But here today, when we hear these words of love, the fact that we're detestable, being a person that becomes honest and diligent, only these promises help save us. And to our children, we can be parents who are respected by our children makes us parents who are going to be acknowledged and respected by our children. What a great promise this is. The children, why do they not respect their parents? How can you respect parents like that? They they lie so well and they say this and that, that it's so inconsistent. The children already know the parents so well between husband and wife. The, the spouse know each other so well. Each, you and I, what kind of person are we? What? Why am I suffering? And what kind of suffering is going to be upon you that you don't know about? And you live in worries and anxieties and you're going to end up receiving curses and uh, calamities? Let's do away with that. We all have to receive this blessing. That's why we came here this evening. This evening, let's receive that blessing. The people who are not being able to th be thankful, they're already in the snare of the devil. Those who are not able to be thankful, they have the curses from their ancestors. Surely things won't work for them. Let's read with one voice what the seven detestable things. Matthew 15, 19, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, thefts, false witness, slanders. Amen. So each of you, you, you talk about some novel is good and so, they're telling lies so well. And they, and you look, read those and you th and think it's so deep. So... Uh, what kind of lupin or or a cane? So there's there's all sorts of great uh, writings, but and then they, they uh, and then there's the 007. The, there's all all the lies of those stories. People love it. And, and watch it. And I was like that at one point. But the seven detestable things in, in, in me, it matches up with that. That's why we enjoy it so much. We like it so much. Oh, that person's like me. That's, they're so cool. They're so great. 
And then, so nothing's right about it. And yet, if they write something that sounds uh, good, and we think, oh, that's me. And with this heart, that's why they, pe people go to watch theaters and movies and read books. And, and then they go and spend so much time on it. And then they think, oh, it's they see themselves through that books, through the movies, through the books, through the theater. And then they watch it on TV and they read the books. They're, so a detestable person reading detestable books, how can you expect to do well? And yet they say they're, they're the critique of it. And so, you know, that's what it sounds like having a, a big cold, uh, a severe cold, a critique. And people enjoy watching the movies and identify with these uh, characters, whether it's, you know, 007. But after a severe cold, it sounds phonetically the same. And then you discuss that, what are you going to do? This is all really doesn't make sense. That's the image of our how we live now. We, we identify with these people and we, we really admire that. And, even, and they say, hey, these, this... We live so incorrectly. What kind of people have this kind of heart? Titus 116. They're, they're so two-faced, double-minded. I'm the one that's wrong. Uh, how can we issue works and uh, works and books and readings and movies like that? According to these words, when I'm that kind of person, then God does not bless us. We have to be awakened from that. We have to, let's read with one voice, Titus chapter 1. What's Titus? To look back, to review. Uh, it sounds phonetically like to, to go back and look back. Titus, Titus 1.16. For out of, they profess to know God, but by their deeds they deny Him, being detestable and disobedient and worthless for any good deed. Amen. So each of you right now, no matter what person in this world, they're not... The, 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 there's nobody where whom this does not apply to for you and I it applies to all of us as well because the detestable things are coming forth from our heart uh, all the time so we have to cleanse three times a day that's uh, Psalms 55 verse 17 we have to cleanse three times a day because these are coming all these detestable things are coming forth from our heart for everybody uh, all the time it's just like we have to brush our teeth three times that's what God is telling us to do. Psalms 55, verse 17. And Matthew 6, 9. He tells us to say the daily prayer, Lord's Prayer three times a day. Those people who don't eat His words, they're detestable. Their actions and their words are different. They're two-faced and double-minded. Between husband and, fight, uh, husband and wife, when they fight, they say, oh, you're so two-faced. They're the same. Both are same. They're, because their actions and words are different. They're the same, but... I'm double. I'm two-faced, when you're two-faced as well. That's how spouses fight, and they say, "Oh, you're so two-faced." I'm two-faced too. Uh, I'm the two-faced that made Adam fall. You're double. You're two-faced as well, and they pretend not to be two-faced, and they accuse the other of being two-faced. But people come and seek advice when they don't know. They a lot came for advice, but now they know. It's it's pretty obvious. When they, when they come for advice. I just pierce them according to the word of God. Those who come for advice in their heart, if you put a, a, if you pierce a, pierce them, Ecclesiastes uh, twelve eleven. If you pierce them with the word of God, so what pierces them? What kind of effect is it being pierced with the word of God? They get people change. They themselves change. Then their spouse ends up end up changing as well. Then their children will change as well. How do they change to be a blessed person? This is an incredible promise. That's these words. So therefore, only the person of wisdom is the pastor that God has sent. Otherwise, they're all fake pastors other than that. Jeremiah 3.15, the, the person that is wide in others' uh, hearts, they pierce the other people's hearts with the word of God. The, even if a house is going to fall, if you have the one nail that's right, the house won't fall. The word of God make, makes that happen. Up until now, why is it things that haven't worked out for us or for our family or for our children? Why? Because you're detestable. Because you're uh, two-faced and your actions and your words are different. What's in your heart, what you be, uh, your actions are different. But today, this is the way to correct it and fix it. Regardless of what problem you came with, to repent that. What is that? That's being awakened. 
from being dead, being awakened from the dead. Let's all be awakened from the dead. Let's all be awakened. We all have to be awakened this evening through vigil service. We have to be awakened. What blessings do we receive when we are awakened from being dead? Genesis chapter 32 and Genesis ch chapter 33. That's the blessings of vigil service. Even one Bible verse is incredible. So these words, however, not just that Korea would be a bookshelf, but to, to fulfill the, the words in the Bible, it can't even take one, one, one millionth of, even if it's all the way to the moon and the universe, if it were the, the bookshelf, we cannot put the Bible into those shelves. That's the word of God. So in our household, even if it's 10 truckloads or big ships or more than 5,000, you know, we have more books than that. It's less than one volume of the Bible. John 21, 25, God said even the universe, this content in the Bible is greater than the volume of the universe has been shortened into the Bible. One Bible verse is incredible. Amidst these words, Genesis chapter 30. 2 and Genesis 33, all of it, it helps awaken us. Through this visual service, we receive answers to your prayers. What a great, pro precious promise this is. Do you say amen? Now, today, here today, regardless of how and why you came, you came with problems, you have headaches, that's why you came. It's, uh, because you're dead, that's why you, you have problems. Ephesians 2, 1, let's look that up. So you're already dead. In your, you think you're alive and you came here, but you're already dead spiritually. You're dead spiritually, and yet you're dead in a strange way. When you hear something that seems to be negative for you, you get all upset. You're dead, but you get so upset when you hear something negative for you. If you are dead in baptism, you'll be blessed. But those people next to you, and when they see you, it's, oh, this is the person I can't deal with. You want to know them? You want to know? You can see the mindset of how they listen to the Word of God. You can determine whether they're going to receive blessings or not. No, do not ride in the same car with them. That There could be an accident. Don't, you know, you're going to face the same. When they face calamity, you may be, have collateral damage as well. Romans 2, 6, see their actions. You, they can reveal what kind of person they are. When you partner with them, you'll fall into ruins. So those are, if you're around them, you could... You know, you could get hit by lightning if you're around those the, with the, uh, who are going to face calamity. So you can be hurt as a bystander. Don't don't be an innocent bystander. Don't be a bystander and be damaged as well when they're punished or even when they fall. You know, when they're falling on something something sharp, they will get hurt. People of the same kind together are together. The world, God says that, the world says that. When you befriend somebody, if we know how to discern, even over here, among here, when we go outside, we'll not be swindled, we'll not be unsuccessful, we'll not fail in business. Those who fail in business, when you ask them, and you, I believed in this person and they were a thief. And I believed in those people and they were a thief too. And so, oh, I was so unlucky, they're saying that. But from the very beginning, why did you deal with them in the beginning? Why did you partner with them? You know, you call the uh, thief next door and you tell them you have this position and then you call a, th uh, a bad person and then you give them a position and you call the... You, you partner up with all the wrong people. The, the, you know, the yellow carbina, the, if you bought all these, if you bought all this fish, and uh, in front of the cats, and the cats ate it all, why do you say they ate it? No, you didn't know any better. Once you realize the word of God, when you're when you're dead, you don't realize this. But when you're alive, you will realize. You will realize. When were you dead? Ephesians two one. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins. The Korean version actually includes that uh, the the words where you can be made alive because of the sins of your ancestors and your own sins, you're dead, but he saved you. So we're dead because of the sins of your ancestors and your own sins and, and the detestable sins, you were dead, but who's the one that saves you? But the Korean version talks about how you can be made alive. So in the Bible, uh, so Ephesians 2.1, uh, we think we're smart, but we don't realize that we ourselves are dead. The sins of our ancestors because of that and our own sins, we don't realize we're spiritually dead.
And so, if you're dead, how do you expect to do well? And how do you expect your business to thrive? If you're dead, when you ask, the, the dead asks, the, the, the demons, those who, they ask other demons who are dead. And then you give them money, and, and you pay them money, and uh, in the deep places on the mountain, they, they give money to the shamans and, and to the other people who are not right, religiously wrong, and that yet, the, to the fortune tellers and all that, they don't know what tomorrow is going to be. They're dead, and they're in the snare of the devil. But we, uh, if we are awakened, then it will work. No matter how much strong that person they are, when they're sleeping, when you, when you do something in front of their eyes, they don't know until they're awake. Even if a thief comes, unless they're awakened, they won't know. But being awakened is helping save them. If you say amen, if you want to be awakened, being awakened, say amen. This being awakened is the way for us to be made alive in the small sanctuary for everybody it will work as well the way for us to be awakened and be made alive from being in the snare of the de de uh, demons to to be part of god being switched from the snare of the devils to be a part of god those second timothy 2 26 those who came with sickness you have to be awakened in the dream if you were a cancer you, if you awaken you it'll be gone in the dream you're running away. Um, the, the thief is running after you. But if you awaken, then the thief is gone. We just have to be awakened. Let's be awakened from the from sickness. Let's be awakened from poverty. Let's be awakened from that and the bad things of our household. Let's be awakened. Our country has to be awakened. This is an incredible promise. Second Timothy two twenty six. It's the last verse there. No more after that. We just read this one verse. Let's read with one voice. Ver voice, And they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. Amen. So you're eating so great. That's such a great verse. But why is it you're, it's so soft? Let's read it one more time. And they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. So, yeah, your amen is, sounds very good. That's good. It's very loud. Very good. These words. I can see it clearly, but I want to look it up again. This is such a great promise. Second Timothy chapter 2, last verse. And that they, they and when they can come to their senses or be awakened, a, and they, they were bound by the devil, and thus, in dreams, it was a very nightmarish dream. Who's the one that's going to help me from my nightmarish dream? Oh, my finger's about to be cut off, and all night. I'm, I'm suffering so much, but when you wake up, it's less than an hour. It seems like all night, but... So... Life may seem so long, but it's like a page. It's a dream in spring. What's a dream in spring? You can't sleep very deeply. Why? In spring, you're busy. They don't let you uh, sleep that deeply. They're all busy. But to, for hard... Uh, he's using some Korean expressions. I'm sorry, I don't understand it all. Who's the one that lets you sleep in the spring? So... The, it's like sleeping in the spring. They don't let you sleep that long. So they call you and they say, Charles, and they, if you're about to sleep and doze off, then they call you. But around spring, people, they, they, they want to sleep in the shade and uh, nearby the, the, the spring. But not only that. You end up doing the work. You're forced to do the work. Yet they're dozing off still. You're, after lunch, you feel like dozing off. And you're on the ground trying to doze off, sleep. But the work in the house, there's so much to do, so they call you. And so you can sleep just briefly. That's, he's using, uh, I guess, referring to times when there were a lot of farming. Yes. When it's so difficult, the life, when it seems so difficult, and we're in the snare of the devil, and when you're having these nightmares, and you're having sweaty nightmares, and you're having a bad nightmare, and then when you wake up, then it's over. The dreams, the dream, nightmare is over. 
if you just awake, then your nightmare is over today. You're, you're facing difficulty, your children are causing heartaches, things aren't working out for you, you're suffering so much, you just have to be awakened from that. What's being awakened from that? From being in the snare of the devil to be changed and change to be of God instead of you just have to be changed from being in the snare of the devil to be a, to, to be a servant of God we have to change our fate we have to change our destiny let's greet the person next to us we have to change our fate we have to change our fate each of you everybody likes to change their fate how just we just have to be awake we just have to awaken that suffering of nightmare in the nightmare oh it, it's, it seems like a dream and a nightmare. It's so, so much suffering. We just have to open your eyes and be awakened. Oh, why is my fate so bad? Why is my life so bad? Not just your fate. Even if you're crying, it's, it's so bad. It sounds like fate and crying phonetically sounds similar in Korean. No matter what circumstance and situation you're in, if you're just awakened from your dream, it'll be over. So our ancestors, what is life like? It seems like a... It seems like a short nap in spring. They expressed it like that. But how is it? How can you be awakened from the nightmare? They don't know how. They don't know to be awakened from that nightmare and the bad fate. They think, they say, that's your fate. Oh, mother, I got married. I got... So, so, you know, I really can't stand it. It's, it's there's so much suffering. No, please hold on. Why do they say, uh, hold? Uh, why do they say hand, handle the suffering? Hold on to the suffering. No, you just have to be awakened. Then there's a Korean saying. How do you suffer? For three years you should be blind. For three years you should not speak. For three years you should not listen. That that's how difficult woman, uh, married woman, when they go to the household of the husband, that's how much they suffer. That's why there's all sorts of heartaches and disease that come from that in Korea, among Korean women. So, there's all sorts of uh, sayings in Korea of how difficult married life is with the in-laws. And then there's all sorts of songs ab about the lamentations of the suffering of the newlyweds or the married couple living with their in-laws. So here today, today, when we just, we just have to be awakened. If we are awake, then it'll be, we just have to awake from that and awaken from the snare of the devil. Today, you know, even if you came here and forgot everything, you just have to remember to be awakened from the dream, uh, the nightmare, you have to be awakened. We change our fate. We just have to be awakened. We have to be awakened spiritually, of course. We have to be awakened. Let's be awakened spiritually. Let's be awakened spiritually. We just have to be awakened. So, so that we can, we, we, so we can say, please awaken, please awaken to the person next to us. Please awake, please awaken, please wake up, please wake up, please wake up, please wake up, please awaken, be awakened. The young people, under certain parents, the children, uh, they, they have nice cars under certain parents. Why is it like me? We just have to be awakened. What about me? Listen, then, then it's really not, nothing much. All those things, the suffering. So somebody wrote a world-class novel. When you awaken from that, the world-class novel, it ends up, it's like toilet paper. Oh, it's so great, you may say. It ends up just like as worth of toilet paper. We just have to be awakened from it. You say you have bad faith, your bad life. No, be awakened. Oh, in my dream, I was a king in my dreams. I don't want to be awakened. Sorry to say, that is a dream. When you're awake, when you're awake it's not much. You quickly come to your senses. You think you're successful? But in your country, what's the best success in our country? You try that. It's a five-year term. It, that's not success. That's not real success. You do it temporarily and it's over. When you're awakened, it's already over. So we just have to be awakened. What is being awakened? You, when you're sleeping, you're in the snare of the devil. You're snare, snare of the, the demons. What's being awakened? Being changed to be part of God. Be of God. Do you say amen? If you're sick, then you just have to be awakened. When you're awakened, what's being awakened? From sickness, uh, be, being part of God, going towards being of God. 
your faith is bad, you just have to be awakened and be of God, part of God. What's being awakened then? 2 Timothy 2.26, let's read that one more time. 2 Timothy 2.26, and, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. Amen. When we're awakened, that's from being in the, means to, from being a servant of the devil, to be changed to be a servant of God, being a servant of God, doing God's will, forced up repentance, living that way, being a person that lives that way, that's being awakened. Following the will of God, that's being awakened, following the will of God. It teaches us all here. So here, we, it says we just have to be awakened. What's being awakened? From being of the demon, to be changed, to be belonging to God, from being belonging to the devil. If you have the devil, then you're wicked and evil. If you have the devil, you don't realize the Bible. Not only do you not realize the Bible, but what's right, and you're not able to know what really saves us, then you don't know anything in the worldly standpoint either. Those who are not awakened when see them work, people say, oh, they're a teacher. They're a teacher at a school. How can be, they be like that? People comment. Well, they're a government official. How can they be like that? How can they do that? Some people on newspaper, it's like that. It, 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 it's written. Why? When they're in the snare of the devil. They don't know what's right or wrong when they're in the snare of the devil. I have not met them directly, but during the Japanese era, there was a Korean judge. He became a judge. So he put to death somebody who wasn't worthy of death, and then he ended up uh, just uh, quitting as a judge. I heard that. What is that? So they don't know what's right and wrong. He ended up putting to death a person that wasn't worthy of death, and later he realized that he quit being a judge. And he lived life with a repentant, uh, contrite manner. That's true. When you're not awakened, you don't know what's right and wrong. Even John 8.44, so the demon of your ancestors, when they're in you, you, you don't know what's right and wrong because you're not awakened. You're in the snare of the, of the demons, the snare of the devil. That's why every, it's the dirty sickness that comes down and a dirty sickness and habits and actions that have come down from the ancestors down to every family. Scientifically, it's been revealed, the bad things of your ancestors, it's hereditary. It's about 10%. They say, there's some things that come down, there's not, there's some things that doesn't, but now these days they say it's 10%. There's 90% left when science is more developed. They'll, they'll soon they'll be able to say 100% of it comes down from the ancestors down to the, to the children, descendants. Why is it that you're not awakened? Your household, even the, you're in poverty, you just have to agree to do well, but you're not awakened and you're always bound and in the snare of the devil, things aren't working out for you because you don't know how to be awakened. If you're awakened, then you become changed to be of God. Who is God? First Samuel chapter 2. Let's look that up. Those who don't say Amen, He destroys. And those who say Amen, He gives blessings to. That is God. God, He does that. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Let's read that. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6 and, six and 7. Where is God located? Four step repentance, the will of God in Christ. God is there when you go into Christ. To, from those who have gone into Christ, from their mouth, they say Amen. Those who, who don't ha are not into Christ, they don't say Amen. They're, those who don't say Amen, they're ruining their own self and their own family, and they're, they're wicked and evil. They're ruining on their own life. They only sow uh, evil, and they only have calamities come back to them. They don't realize this because they're not awakened. So they only have greed to do well, and but they don't even say Amen. Those who don't even say Amen, we, we befriend them. We're the same then. Those who befriend them are the same as those who don't say Amen to the Word of God. Second Corinthians 1.20, only in Christ we say Amen to the Word of God. Those who are not in Christ, the Amen doesn't come forth. So then what about you? If you're not saying Amen to the Word of God, it doesn't come forth. God, you're not able to receive any of the blessings. You become already the unlucky person that doesn't say Amen. You're you're not awakened. They've not been able to be awakened. If you are awakened, when you go into Christ, you're awakened. So going into Christ, following according to God's will, and if you've been awakened, when you go into Christ, the Amen already comes forth from when you hear the word of God. Those who have not gone into Christ, the Amen doesn't come forth. Those with demon inside. So when I go when somebody like them comes next to me, then you you have somebody unlucky like that come next to me. That's for me to repent, God. 
that kind of person. It's very pitiful. I, I have very pitiful whenever I look at them. I realize I'd say, oh, they're very pitiful. But to that person, uh, to that kind of person, the rebuke doesn't go. The, the rebuke doesn't go forth that much. They're not awakened. I don't. Re, uh, rebuke doesn't go that much. First grade, the teacher doesn't hit them. They don't know much. There's no need to. No need to spank them, or no need to. Uh, uh, Koreans used to. They, they used, the teachers used to hit. Uh, you know, a college student. If they don't know how to go to the bathroom, then you rebuke them. They just go bathroom anywhere. But a kid, they don't. They don't know how to go to the bathroom. Hold their bathroom. Proverbs twenty-seven verse five. Those who have love of God, you. They. I can rebuke them. The people for whom a rebuke doesn't come forth, there's so many people like that. They don't, they're not, uh, rebuke doesn't come forth. God, to us, yeah. some people say, I live like this, I have no problem. They think they're no problem, but, you know, the calamity is piling up and the bombs are piling up and then they end up having a child that they lose a child or they become disabled. That's Proverbs 19.13, when you see the parents. How long will they last? And then there's going to be problems with their family or with their children. They, they hide it. And yet it can still be seen even though they try to hide it. Those kind of people, they surely don't say Amen. That's why they don't receive blessings of the, of the, of the Lord. They're bound by the demons. I'm still, I'm not awakened from the, from, why? Because why is being uh, awakened? So, so bad? Who's the one that ruins our own family? Proverbs 14.1. We're the ones that ruin, ruin our family. I ruin my own household. I don't... I ruin my children, my household, my country. And I, I have to be awakened from that. We all have to be awakened, but we all have to be awakened from that. We don't even know that we're going that path. Uh, the path of ruins, that is God. He's such a wonderful God. We just have to be awakened. What is this being awakened? What do we look up now? Proverbs, First Samuel, who is God? Us uh, being awakened is then be us being changed to belong to God, being changed to belong to God. We've been changed to Him who kills us and makes us alive. You and I, who are we? When we belong to God, we go to be part of God, then that's what happens. When we are awakened, we, are, we belong to God. He's the one that kills and makes alive. And puts down and exalts. In verse 9, He exalts even those who are in the trash, who are lowly. God, He does it all. We're changed to belong to Him. Then do you say Amen? So you and I, let's see who we, be, who we are friends with. Oh, I'm not. they're not able to say Amen. They're receiving curses and calamities. Am I close to them? Be, be awakened. Open your eyes. If you're with them, you'll end up with the calamities as well. Let's read with one voice. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and rich. He brings low. He also exalts. Amen. Now, we, now, if we're not awakened, if we're not able to be awakened, whoever it is, they'll be of the demons. They'll be part of, in the snare of the demons, of the devil, whether they may be alive, but they're of the, of the uh, snare of the devil. The business, they don't know, should I do this or that? Whatever they do, it won't work. Some people ask me, what kind of business should I do? You, if you're not be awakened, if you're in the snare of the devil, no matter what you do, it won't work. So some people say, oh, this is doing well. Should I continue in it? You think you're going to do well? Uh, what you're doing well, it's all a, 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 a grenade. Proverbs 21, verse 4, those who are not awakened, you do well. You're making a, a, a time bomb and you hide it. And people hide it where? Without being thanksgiving. They hide it un underneath the blanket, and pretty soon it all explodes. And that's when in their sleep they have a fire and they lose everything. They're foolish. Without doing well, without being awakened, that's all sin. Proverbs 21, verse 4. If you're not being awake, if you're not awakened, when the wicked does well, that's all sin. So your business doing well? Can I? Should I continue? People ask. Be awakened, brother. Please be awakened. Please be. A then after that, the blessings are blessing. But now it's all curses and calamities. Even if it's, you're doing well, people don't un seem to understand this. So then, we up until now, the fact that we are asleep when things doing well, when things are difficult, we think we're doing well. 
when we're, we think we're doing well, we're not, we're not awakened. When we're awakened, we become, we belong to God, we're of God. You say amen. Only that is a blessing. Only that is happiness. There's no calamities in the family. It, the cloud in your life is gone. That's being awakened. What's this awa being awakened? Colossians 4, 3, 4 2. Earlier, I think I mis mis misinterpreted about people doing well or not, when you're not doing well. Being awakened is God's will. What's God's will? Colossians 4 2. That's Colossians 4 2. Being awakened. It's God's will. God's will is Colossians 4 2. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Once Colossians 4 2. Because even if you're in this. Even Colossians also sounds a little bit like if you're lost in a gorge, but even then you can be made alive. People, if you go to the high places, it may be difficult, but it's a, when you're, there are people who fall off, they're so clever. That's those who fall off a gorge, it's over for them. But even so, God will save them, salvage them. That's why Colossians, it's Colossians, even though, did you fall off a gorge? Did you, did you slide off a gorge? So, but is it good when you feed yourself when when you're in a um, you get some water at, when you have a family? It's not enough. You end up fighting. There's not enough water for the whole family. What are you going to do then? And what about those next the neighbors that want? that water as well, you're going to argue with them from that suffering. Let's be awakened. Those who have fallen off, they can do well as well. Colossians, oh, you can realize that it's helping save you. When you go to Colossians and read that, you realize that you'll be saved, you'll save your family, you'll save your neighbor. Colossians 4.2, let's read that one more time. Colossians 4.2, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Each of you, Matthew chapter 26, when you read there, Jesus goes to prayer and he asks the disciples to be awakened. What's being awake? What is being awake? Thanksgiving coming forth. That's being awake. Thanksgiving come forth. When you're thankful, and then if you're so thankful, you're not dozing off. No. When you're th so thankful, your eyes are so wide open. Even your flesh, even on this land, when you're really thankful here, to the person next to you, don't give many. Even if you give them just ten dollars from from being uh, dozing off, they won't doze off anymore. With I'm have, I should call somebody up and give them that. You know, give uh, the the prize for being awake, ten dollars each. Each of you now, when you have something to be very thankful for, you won't doze off. Your flesh won't, uh, won't doze off. But what's being awakened through Thanksgiving? Through Thanksgiving, we're awakened. We are awake through thanksgiving. Through thanksgiving, we're awake. Do you say amen? So what is this thanksgiving? It's God's will, according to that. It's God's will for us. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. To be thankful in all things, that's being awake. That's being awakened. That's God's will also for us. So each of you, when you're not thankful and you grumble and complain instead, that person will fall into ruins. When those who grumble and complain, before they grumble and complain, God tests their wicked person whether there's uh, uh, there's God or not. God will destroy them. They doubt and they don't believe in God, and then commit sins of immorality. And after that, after they commit sins of immorality, the sins coming out of our heart and out of our flesh, when they commit that sin, they test whether God is there or not, and say, and the Amen doesn't come forth. <laughs> that kind of those who sin like that, they don't say amen. Uh, they, they're already outside of Christ. Aha! Uh -huh. The person that doesn't say amen. Oh, they're commit, committing the sins of immorality. When they commit the sins of immorality, that they, they test God and they criticize and hate others and those their neighbors and they grumble and complain and they say things aren't working out for them. That's First Corinthians chapter ten. It's recorded there. So that person, when you can see what they're doing, when their deeds are, when they grumble and complain, you realize, oh no. Starting from sins of immorality, they come to this point. So when they go to a certain point, point of grumbling complaint, First Corinthians 10:10, 10, 10, those who grumble and complain, God Himself will destroy them. Why? Because they have gone so much, so far from the point of immorality. If you've gone past 38 parallel, you've gone too much. We, us being awakened, what's it mean? Because of sickness and disease, 
you have problems that you brought and all sorts of problems that you have, more than 10,000 different kinds. Everybody has all sorts of problems, this, this such high quantity of problems that, to give a sermon that says this is what we correct that, this is that's how we correct that. So it may take decades for with all the problems that you have, but God says the master key to resolve all of this the hotel room, no matter how many rooms there are, with a master key, you can open all the all the rooms. The master key is here, is to be awake, to be awakened, no matter what problems that you have, it'll be resolved, it'll be resolved today. For everybody, the, all their problems will be resolved. Even your personality can change, your, your physique can change. The bad things in your family will be over between husband and wife, it'll get better. And the children will do even better. Our country will be contributors to our country. God will give us these incredible blessings. This happening, that's being awakened. What is being awakened? From being in the snare of the devil, to be changed, to be in the, uh, obedient to God. God is the source of all blessings. He resolves all the problems. He changes everything for us. So what's being awakened then? Aw being awakened is following according to God's will. To pray without ceasing and being thankful in all things. And this is being awakened. And that, what is that? That's God's will for us. First Thessalonians 5.18. Let's read with one voice. In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. This thanksgiving, it's God's will for us. So, those who are following God's will and give thanksgiving, they're the ones following God's will and giving thanksgiving. First, be always putting effort in prayer without ceasing. That same thing as giving... It says, give effort to prayer, same thing as pray without ceasing. Give, give thanksgiving, the prayer that you have all the time. It's God's will, four-step repentance. When you do four-step repentance, after the third step is over, thanksgiving will come forth. Why? Because there's something already going back to you. The dead will be made alive, and the, the, the alive will raise up. So thanksgiving will come forth. When you're always giving thanksgiving like this, that's being awake. That's being awake, and you say amen. Then you and I, he, when you do four step repentance here, when you properly do four step repentance according to the word of God, Nehemiah chapter 9, one fourth realize your sins. One, it's not realizing your sins, it's one fourth, but one fourth realizing your sins. One fourth, ask God for forgiveness. One fourth, cleanse your heart to cleanse your conscience, and you, you who are dead will be raised up, and you're bound to only be thankful. This thanks, thankfulness coming forth, that's being awakened. Then you and I, you, if you're not awakened from your sickness or from your poverty, you're not wake, awakened from your bad personality, you're not awakened from that. Or you have bad physique and you're not awakened from that. And you, the dirty personality of your children, you're not awakened and not awakened from bad relationship, bad relationship with your spouse. Then that means you have not done forced step repentance when we go into Christ. Not that we would do it, but God Himself makes us give, uh, enables us to have amen to the Word of God. He makes us changed. He changes us. Not that. Not that we would do it on our own. He makes us anew. That's Second Corinthians five seventeen. When when we're awakened, we have no sickness. And in your, if you were in, in a nightmare and you were having suffering, when you awaken, there's no more. The difficulty in your household, your business not doing well, that you'll be awakened from that nightmare and dream. Then there will be no more. All the problems that you have, that means you're in. The, if you're in the dream, uh, he will make us like we're awakened. When we are awakened from that nightmare, better and better things will happen. We'll be, we'll belong to God. We'll be part of God. That's being awakened, and, and everything will work out well. Everything will go better through four-step repentance. Let's be awakened this hour. Through four-step repentance, let's be awakened. Let's be awakened. Then we'll be made alive as well. Those who are not made alive, they only has be part of curses and calamities. Even so, when you do four-step repentance, it will work. Let's close our eyes and let's go into four, let's do four-step repentance. Let's close our eyes, do four-step repentance. When I deal with so many people, it's exactly according to the word of God. You and I, we're this, we're like that. But when others do well, we then we get envious and jealous. When others, when they, when they, you see them receive a lot of grace, then you feel bad. Then you realize that that's when you're a wicked, when you're like that, you're a wicked person. Realize this, when others do well. If you don't have the heart of praying others to do well, then realize that you're a wicked and an evil person. If, when the prayer doesn't come forth for others to do well, then you're really a wicked and evil person. That's First Samuel chapter 12, verse 23 on. So, therefore, each of you then, 
If you have prayed for others to do well first, between husband and wife, you would pray for them to do well. Between husband and wife, if you don't have a good relationship with your spouse, you realize, oh, really a bad person. Do not befriend them. When you befriend them, you're, you'll lose out on your business. They're the ones that's going to fall into ruins. But when you go close to them, you'll end up befalling calamity as well. Do not befriend them. That Oh, Mr. Kim, I partnered with him. Oh, something's going to go well? No, not Mr. Kim, but uh, they're a wicked person that doesn't have love between their spouse, with their spouse. A wicked person is the one, when others do well, they have jealousy and envy. They don't, they don't like it. And between husband and wife, they always want to have an argument. Oh, that they're already a wicked person. Realize that. That kind of person, from here, when you do four step repentance, they'll correct that, fix that. Even though they're enemy with their spouse, it'll be fixed and corrected. No matter when somebody does well, and when you get envious and jealous of that, that person, they can be healed and corrected as well. No matter what circumstance and situation you're in right now. When you have a bad personality, you have bad wickedness, and something's really bad in your life, if you really even realize one of those things, all of that can be healed and fixed. Confess that you have these things, and then all of that will be done, uh, corrected. Who? The blood of Christ makes us anew. So, regardless of what you came here with, what worries and anxieties and what problems you may have come here with today, through the hands of the Almighty God, when you if you just confess that you have that sin, then God, through the blood of Christ, cleanses us and what we have confessed and what we have confessed our sins, He erases it and makes it as if we don't have it. And that's when our personality changes. That's when our physique changes and the blessings before you changes and the difficulties and curses will, will depart and it will be changed into a blessing. We have to receive these blessings. We have to receive these blessings. Each of you now, what, is, what problem is before you? Is a problem with money? Is a problem with health? In your heart, do you have uh, 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 emotional problems? Is it what problem is it? Is it a problem with your children? No matter what problem it is, let's confess that. Lord, I have this sin. I have this problem. Let's confess it. That problem is sin. Realize that that problem is sin. I have this and confess that I have this sin. Because of this sin, I've tormented God. Please ask for forgiveness. I have this kind of sin. I've committed the sins. It's the price of the sins for me. Because of my sins, I've tormented my parents. And just like uh, dishonorable children, disobedient children have tormented the parent, we have tormented God. Isaiah 43, verse 24, confess that we have this sin and we have tormented God. Then the Lord will forgive us of all of those sins. And after that, the sins, it has, the sins have caused hurt in your heart, and your heart was really uh, in disarray then because of this, it won't work for me or for my household, for my children. And so therefore me, if I'm not, even if I'm thankful, I just pass by. Okay, no, that's wickedness and evil. If you're not thankful, that's being double-minded, two-faced. Thanksgiving, genuine Thanksgiving has to come forth like a child who is so happy. Just just like if they have one candy they and one chocolate, a child gets so happy and runs with it. The, the person that's so thankful and happy like that, if we have not become like that, realize that you're already wicked and evil. This great promise to help save me who are, when I'm dead from spiritually dead, that I'll be changed from my poverty. Uh, uh, from my poverty, I'll go. I'll be resolved. My poverty and my all my problems will be resolved and. Why is it that I don't have a good relationship with, with my spouse? That's the problem when that doesn't happen. Everything else won't work out well either. When husband and wife are not one, then the children, things won't work out for them. Whatever they do, things won't work out for them. And their business, it seems like it's doing well, but it's going to fall into ruins. They realize that it's not going to do well. It seems like you're doing well now, but you don't know when, when you're going to fall into ruins with all the calamities. Let's confess that today. Let's be awakened. And true thanksgiving has to pour out and realize that we have to be uh, we realize we have to be awakened. Let's confess this now. When we come to the Lord three times, then Satan will depart. When it departs from there, when we confess that let's be awakened today. And from poverty, let's be awakened. From sickness and disease, let's be awakened. And from curses and calamities, let's be awakened. And from the bad things in our family, let's be awakened. And let's be awakened so that our children can do well. Let's be awakened so we can do well, each one of us. And we have to be awakened so our country can do well. 
Let's cry out to the Lord three times and pray. Lord, 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 this evening, help us to be awakened through four star repentance. Help us to be awakened. It's today in Christ, help us to go to, into Christ. Let God's promises be our promises. Through four star repentance, let us go into Christ and let's, God, let God's, let's let God's promise be ours. What is it that we're expecting? What are we looking forward to? What are we looking forward to? Help us to make put effort in praying. In thanksgiving, let's be awakened. Let's pray without ce ceasing and put effort in prayer. And with thanksgiving, let's be awakened. According to God's words, those who obey His words will receive answers to prayers. Those who mock the word of God, they are Pharisees. Today, let's be obedient and receive answers to prayers. And let's receive answers to prayers. Let's be awakened. Let us receive the promises of all of His blessings.